More breaking news now. A CNN exclusive. Has the U.S. government misled lawmakers about how the Saudis may be expanding their missile program with Chinese help? Our congressional correspondent, Phil Mattingly, has been digging into this. Uh, what are you learning, Phil? Well, Wolf, there has long been simmering tension between a bipartisan group of lawmakers on Capitol Hill and the Trump administration. And what we've found is it's not just public. Behind the scenes, there are perhaps even more explosive issues and broader concerns. Tonight, sources tell CNN exclusively that the U.S. government has obtained intelligence that Saudi Arabia has significantly expanded its ballistic missile program through purchases from China, a move that challenges longstanding U.S. policy of, of preventing missile proliferation in the country and raising concerns of a growing arms race in the volatile Middle East. Many countries, including Israel and Iran, have missiles, and I think the Saudis, uh, they want their own capability, too. Sources also tell CNN the Trump administration initially left out the intelligence, which showed China secretly aided advances in both technology and infrastructure from a key Senate committee, prompting questions whether the Trump administration has implicitly given its okay for the advances. Right now, the situation is not acceptable. The dispute over the withheld intelligence spilled into the open during a Senate Foreign Relations Committee hearing with Secretary of State Mike Pompeo in April. I'd like to flag for your attention a classified matter, the details of which I won't and can't discuss here, where we raised with the department an important issue that had not previously been shared with us, would not in fact have been shared with us had we not raised it with you, and may have made the difference in how senators voted on a particular matter. New Jersey Bob Senator Bob Menendez, 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 who declined to discuss the issue or the underlying intelligence with CNN, only received a classified briefing on the matter after requesting one. Sources said Menendez was initially made aware of the Saudi advances from Democratic staffers, including one who had traveled to the region. The intelligence echoes a January Washington Post report citing satellite imagery that analysts said showed advances in Saudi infrastructure and technology, and new images taken just last month showing their activity has not stopped. With tensions escalating between Saudi Arabia and regional rival Iran, the move raises questions about whether the kingdom is taking a step forward preparing to seek a nuclear weapon, something Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman made clear could one day be on the table. Saudi Arabia does not want to acquire any nuclear bomb. But without a doubt, if Iran developed a nuclear bomb, we will follow suit as soon as possible. Pompeo blunt about the administration views of that reality. The Islamic Republic of Iran was permitted to continue its missile program under the JCPOA. It didn't slow them down. And so others are doing what they need to do to uh, create a deterrence tool for themselves. The Saudi embassy in the U.S. did not respond to CNN's request for comment. The Chinese foreign ministry did not deny the sales, but noted its strategic partnership with the kingdom, quote, does not violate any international laws, nor does it involve the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. Crown Prince, thank you very much. The U.S. administration for months has made a concerted effort to strengthen allies in the region, most notably Saudi Arabia, even amid bipartisan uproar over the murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi and the brutal war in Yemen, where the Saudis have fought against Iranian proxies and civilians have paid the price. They are an enormous support to us. We're aiming to keep that relationship with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The State Department declined to comment on classified material and said they expect the Kingdom to adhere to its commitment not to pursue nuclear weapons. And, Wolf, this information comes at the same time that we learned two weeks ago the administration would be going around Congress to approve a weapon sales $8.1 billion to Saudi Arabia and the UAE. Lawmakers on a bipartisan basis, they are now pushing back on that, considering voting to cancel out that sale. Just another step in a process. One other thing to keep an eye on, there is a Saudi sanctions bill on a bipartisan basis that has been worked on. This is an issue that may come up with that as that moves forward in the weeks ahead. Very strong reporting, uh, Phil Mattingly. Thank you very much uh, for that report. Joining us now, Democratic Senator Chris Murphy of Connecticut. He's a member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Senator, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, so you and other top lawmakers uh, on the Senate Foreign Relations uh, Committee introduced a package of joint resolutions to block U.S. weapons sales to Saudi Arabia. You just heard this excellent report from our Phil Mattingly. Do you have any specific concerns about China's involvement? So I can't comment on the substance of classified briefings, but let me say this. I was uh, in those briefings, and I have nothing to offer that contradicts uh, the reporting of uh, Phil Mattingly. Um, it has long been the policy of the United States that we don't want 
to sell ballistic missiles, nor do we want anybody else to sell ballistic missiles to Saudi Arabia, because it would essentially be a green light to the Iranians to continue to build up their ballistic missile program. Many of us on both sides of the aisle support a moratorium on arms sales to Saudi Arabia today because our relationship with the Saudis has you know, fundamentally gone off the rails and we can talk about all the ways in which that has happened. The war in Yemen is a disaster of epic proportions. The targeting of American residents and journalists uh, is obviously beyond the pale. Uh, but uh, if there is indeed going to be a ballistic missiles arms race in the region, uh, that would be very bad for the United States. That would be very bad for Israel uh, and very bad for our allies. Do you believe, Senator, that the uh, Trump administration deliberately misled lawmakers about China's involvement? Well, again, I can't specifically report, uh, talk to you about the contents of that classified briefing. What I can tell you is that this administration has effectively given a blank check to the Saudis uh, and has committed a record amount of arms sales. They are under the belief that if the Saudis just get bigger and stronger and uh, obtain more military c capabilities, that that will cow uh, Iran back into its corner. In fact, the opposite is happening. Uh, the more weapons we sell to Saudi Arabia, the more advanced their military becomes. Uh, frankly, the more interested Iran becomes in increasing the size and scope and capacity of their military, and that's bad for us. I know that it's sensitive uh, in, in classified information, but in general, can you tell us whether you believe the administration has been hiding intelligence from your committee? Well, let me, let me say this. There, there, I agree with Senator Menendez. There was a classified briefing that we got uh, that would not have been given to us if Democratic staff had not uncovered that information. And if indeed the uh, Chinese are selling ballistic missiles to the Saudis, the question is why would that need to be classified in the first place? The sources and methods that we might uncover intelligence like that may need to be classified. But if that is indeed true, um, that is very relevant to a public debate that Congress is having about our future relationship with Saudi Arabia. And beyond it potentially being embarrassing uh, to the administration or to others that might be trying to hide that information were it to be true, uh, there isn't really any other reason to not have it out in the public domain. When it comes to U.S. arms sales to Saudi Arabia, and they're in the billions and billions of dollars, do you believe, Senator, you have enough bipartisan support in the Senate to override a potential presidential veto? I, I think we're getting closer. Uh, when I first brought up a resolution to disapprove of a Saudi arms sale during the Obama administration, uh, I got about 24 of my colleagues to vote for it. Uh, today, there are certainly over 50 Democrats and Republicans who would vote to stop this most recent arms sale that's been noticed to the Saudis, and it includes bombs that the Saudis use to drop inside Yemen on civilians. Uh, I think it is a question as to whether we can get to 67. Lindsey Graham, who was one of the chief, chief proponents of these arms sales in the past, is now the lead Republican sponsor on the effort to stop the arms sale. And so that shows you uh, how quickly the votes have shifted. I think we're, we're closing in on a veto-proof majority in the Senate when it comes to Saudi arms sales because Republicans are as um, uh, perplexed as Democrats are as to why this administration treats Saudi Arabia as if they are the, the, the senior partner in our relationship. Senator Murphy, uh, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks a lot, Wolf.